Have you ever wondered why we bring potluck dinners to the homes of the bereaved? Or why we call our funeral services a home-going celebration? Or why we delay a funeral to ensure family members who live far away can't attend? These traditions not only help with the healing process, but they also have biblical and historical roots. For instance, in the Bible, the bereaved would often hire professional mourners at the time of death. Jeremiah 9, 7 and 18 um, says, Consider and call for the mourning women to come. Send for the skillful woman to come. Let them make haste and raise a wailing over us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids flow with water. These professional mourners date back to the Egyptians, a custom that the Hebrew people picked up during slavery. The mourners may have been close family or friends, or they may have simply been someone who was blessed or touched by the person who had died. Just as there are death and funeral traditions in the Bible, there are healing traditions around death and funerals in the African-American community and tradition. These customs help us heal. They help us come together and help us support one another at the time of death. Death has a way of bringing family and close friends and even um, acquaintances together. In some cases, dating back to slavery, the family may even postpone the funeral to ensure that everyone could be there, especially those who have to travel great distances. There are also positions of honor that point to having a special celebration with the deceased or having a special relationship with the deceased. For example, you will see flower girls or pallbearers at black funerals, usually chosen from close friends or family member. They are available to help um, give special attention to the grieving family. And in some cases, nurses are still used to this day to aid the mourner who became overwhelmed with emotions. Then there's the music. Music plays a very prominent and vital role in the funeral service. The choir, soloists, or musicians play gospel music or well-known church hymns soon and very soon. When we all get to heaven, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. Then there's also the plethora of floral arrangements. The more floral arrangements to adorn the casket and grave, the more the deceased is deemed to have been loved or revered. In some cases, the family even places a personal item that belonged to the deceased in the casket. This tradition dates back to Africa. For example, we put my mother's favorite church hat in her coffin. Likewise, a family in my congregation placed a set of hair clippers in the coffin of a young man who was a barber by training, trade, and profession. We often call our funerals a home-going celebration in the black tradition. This title has a dual meaning. It grew out of slavery when slave owners did not allow the slaves to gather for funerals. Hardship led the slaves to believe that death was often the transition to freedom, to a better life. But there's also the notion of eternal life that the Bible promises. So in this sense, a funeral was a time of celebration, a home-going ceremony, returning to freedom a better life, or eternal life. The slaves even believed that in death, the deceased would return to Africa, the motherland. A funeral was a celebration because a loved one had transitioned to a better life, but we were also cognizant of the fact that we would no longer see them. So there's also mourning and lamenting, keening, K-E-E-N-I-N-G is the act of mourning and crying verbally. It is one of the most distinguishing features of traditional black funerals. To those unfamiliar with the tradition, this keening may appear to be dramatic or over-the-top, a dramatic or over-the-top expression of grief. 
However, Keating continued throughout the funeral. It occurred during the musical selections. It continued up until the pallbearers even carried the coffin down the church aisle to the hearse and eventually to the committal service at the gravesite. The mood often changed though a bit during the eulogy because the eulogy is uplifting. It combines stories about the deceased with what feels like a revival sermon about eternal life and the hope to meet God and to see the dead again in heaven. Once the service concludes, family and friends gather at the deceased's home for a meal that we typically call a repast. The repast, much like the gathering of family at the home of the deceased days before the funeral, was a time of family reunion where we would tell old stories and share memories about the deceased. Of course, Food and fellowship always go very well together. Neighbors and friends would bring potluck dishes. The food and the occasion allowed family and friends to reconnect and to reacquaint themselves with one another. Now we are a diverse people and funeral traditions come in a variety of forms and traditions. However, these old African-American Southern funeral traditions help bind us together at the time of death. They aid in the commencement of the healing process. So, a home-going celebration was a time to bring us together for healing. So until next time, remember, say it good, preacher, but make it plain.